everyone. Thanks so much for being here. Um, I suspect a lot of you find it very surprising that there is still a $60 billion industry out there that uh, technology has not gotten its hands on. Um, but I'm excited to be here tonight and talk about a space that is long overdue for disruption. Uh, my name is Juliette Horton and I am the founder and CEO of Everly. And we are saving couples hundreds of hours and thousands of dollars on wedding planning, which is a space that really hasn't evolved much in the last 20 years, if at all. And in the grand uh, tradition of a tech event, can you help me out? Where's that? Oh, uh, you know what? It's behind you, so you might need to point it that way a little bit. Got it. Uh, so as I said, we're, we're saving couples hundreds of hours, thousands of dollars. This is a space that really hasn't evolved much and really like the last generation of people who go through this process. Um, so a little bit about what this ecosystem looks like. Um, it's really existed for a long time on two extremes. You have one end with the uh, traditional wedding planners um, who are very expensive because it's a lot of customization, it's a lot of meeting people in person, and it's a business model that just doesn't scale, and as a result of that, it's quite expensive. And on the other end, you have companies like The Knot and, and thousands of variables like that that sort of dole out generic advice and tons of listings that really look the same and it puts a lot of the onus back on the end user to filter through a lot of information to figure out what is relevant to them and what makes sense to them and what's going to meet their needs. Um, and in all our user testing and market research, this just isn't working for couples. One of these solutions is incredibly expensive and the other solution is incredibly time consuming. And so what we're doing at Everly is we're the first and only company that is providing a solution that tackles both that time and money constraint that so many couples going through this process are really experiencing. And we're doing that by providing the same personalized support of that traditional wedding planner, but we're doing it at scale. And as a result of that, we're able to charge about one-tenth of what a traditional wedding planner would charge. Oh, goodness. You're getting a sneak preview of my Parks and Rec recommendation coming up here. Um, you know what, I'm just, just going to skip this. Um, so we had a, just a couple quick screenshots up there, but one of them is the, a screenshot of our profile. And what that is, is we're asking couples a series of questions about what's important to you. And this is really the piece that any little bit of technology that's gotten into the wedding planning space has missed so far. Like I said, a lot of it is generic advice. And we're asking people, what actually matters to you? We know you want something different than the next couple. You can afford different things. You have different priorities. And so we're saying, like, what do you do on the weekends? And how much free time do you realistically have to spend on this because our recommendations are going to be very different as a result of that. And so when a couple completes their profile, they hit submit and they receive a customized budget, monthly to-do list, and vendor recommendations that meet that style, budget, and priority concerns. Um, and so we're finding um, that this is a, a huge difference from what else is out there in the market, like I said, both in terms of time and money. Um, part of what I wanted to talk about, too, is just since this is such a helpful and, and great community, is um, some recommendations that we have of just sort of going through this process ourselves. We launched last year and the beginning of 2018, um, and that quick little Parks and Rec slide that you saw up there was, if for any of you fans out there, there's a scene where Tom's talking about how his business failed, and he goes, hindsight's 2020. And Amy Poehler character says, it kind of seems like regular site could have caught that. Like there's a few things that you go through in the process and you get to the other end of it and you go, oh, maybe regular site could have caught that. Um, and so my recommendations here as we are a community of just sharing advice for any of you who are in those early stages of development, um, I'm putting the MVP up here with the emphasis on M of that minimum viable product of building something that you can just get out into the market and test. And like I said, we launched early last year and really what I call like a Wizard of Oz model, a lot of it is showing consumers like this is what we can provide you. And from our end, it is a little bit of like hustle on the back end to put the pieces together and to provide them with something that, you know, from their end is still perfectly usable, but we haven't built the entire tech space on um, in the interest of, you know, doing this as quickly and as cheaply as possible just to be able to do that market testing. 
Um, the next bit of recommendation here is market sizing. We launched just in Seattle, so to the extent that you can break something down and limit that market so that you don't have to spend that time and money investing in a national launch, or in our case, uh, a national vendor network, we were able to really corner the Seattle market, meet tons of vendors, provide the support that we need to couples in this market because we haven't taken on every single market yet. And that last one is a bit more tactical than it is um, high level strategy. But this is something that as a, a CEO and to fellow CEOs and founders, you probably have a similar experience with is you wear 100 hats. And what I found, my piece of advice I want to pass along is task batching of saying, all right, I'm going to deep dive one thing every day and make a ton of progress on that. Um, that might seem like a little thing, but for those of you who feel like you're doing 100 different jobs at any given time, I found that to be incredibly useful. Um, and my last slide here, uh, which we're not going to skip ahead to, but was a screen grab of wedding crashers because I feel like I get to work that into professional uh, context in my line of work. Um, so one thing that I would ask of the community to the extent I can is that I think a lot of you uh, are probably at a similar phase of life that I am where you spend a lot of your free time and money going to other people's weddings. Um, and if you are, and if there's people in Seattle who could use some help, uh, a cost-effective solution in their wedding planning, we would love a recommendation from you. So thank you so much for your time. Jumped around a bit here, but I would love to open it up to Q&A. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that's a really good question. And I think that's a reason that this industry has remained sort of impervious from a lot of technological leaps because it is such a high stakes thing for people. And so that's one aspect that we haven't taken out completely. And so one of the ways that we were able to launch really leanly is part of what couples get when they work with us is unlimited communication. To say you can call, email, chat, or text with us with any sort of question that you have. And quite honestly, part of the reason we're doing that is because it allows us to gather data to say what questions are you asking, and the longer we're in business and the more questions we get and the more money we're investing into this business, we can see those questions and preempt them with answers kind of earlier stage, and we'll answer that question before you even have a chance for it to come up as a question. Uh, but because of that, it's allowed people to really get comfortable with this. Say, okay, we're going to tailor your vendor recommendations, but if things change, your budget changes, you realize how expensive things are and that you know, affects another area, just give us a call and we'll tweak that from our end. So that's our way of, one, getting customers comfortable with doing something very, very differently, um, as well as allowing us to figure out really what's on people's minds. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, uh, we monetize just the customer side. So a lot of what this industry is doing is it just monetizes the vendor side. So as I mentioned, there's hundreds of directories which are entirely paid advertising models. And then couples go on there and they can look at hundreds of vendors, but a lot of couples don't want hundreds of recommendations because you have to filter through those. So we've turned that model completely on its head and our entire revenue model is based on couples paying for our service as essentially a very low cost alternative to a traditional wedding planner. So we charge one flat fee of $750 to work with couples all throughout the planning process, which compares to about $7,000 for a wedding planner here in the Seattle market. Uh, so we don't monetize anything on the vendor side, and that's a really important call out for customers to say we're not a marketplace business. The only loyalty we have is to our couples, and the vendors that we're recommending are because they do really, really good work, and we know them, and we trust them, and we want to put our name on the work that they do, not because they're paying us you know, a $50 a month advertising fee or something. Yeah. Yeah, I think one of the biggest surprises is how large of a budget that sort of the demographic that we're appealing for. Um, I had gotten into this business thinking that we would probably shake out at about 60th percentile to about the 80th percentile of wedding budgets. The 50th percentile is about $30,000 uh, that people spend on their wedding. And I thought that, you know, you're really paying for convenience. Um, this is going to be a little bit more of a higher end product for people who are, you know, used to paying for things that make their life easier. And I've actually been really surprised how many couples we get who are in that, you know, ten to fifteen thousand dollar wedding budget, who still value as a percentage of their total spend, a, a seven hundred and fifty dollars just to speed up the process. So I think that's been interesting. That you know, convenience and having sort of the perks of a wedding planner is not a high end need. 
um, there's sort of no correlation to like how much money you're willing to spend and how much free time you have. Uh, so that's probably been the biggest surprise. Yeah. Yeah, so the scalability really comes in our expertise. Um, so we have this massive database of vendors that we're able to recommend. We have you know, 30 different sort of budget templates that certain people will fall into. Um, and because all of that is already done, we're able to pass that savings on to consumers. And then the scalability longer term for us as a business comes in launching in other markets. I think this is another reason that people have been intimidated to take on the wedding industry is it is a hyper local market. And so, the good aspect of that was we were able to launch just in Seattle. Uh, that means every other sort of way to expand is a city by city rollout. One more question? Yeah. I'm curious, how do you manage acquiring your vendors under your business model? Yeah, that's a great question. What I think the most helpful aspect of this has been because we're not monetizing any side of that, every single person wants to be recommended. So these tend to be really easy conversations. Um, sometimes I'm talking to vendors and they're like, yeah, 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 get to the pitch. I know you want me to pay a $60 a month subscription fee or something like that. And when we're able to tell them of like, we just work with couples you know, and, and monetize that side. Um, we own, the only thing we want from you is for you to do great work when we refer you to couples. Um, as a result of that, they're like, oh yeah, what's the catch? You're just a free referral source. Send everybody to me. Um, so as we get our name out there, you know, more like we probably have about 10 vendors reach out to us a week asking, you know, can I join your platform? Can I have couples recommended to me? So putting a lot of the work back on them because we're not asking anything else of them has allowed us to, to grow. Can I grab one more? One more. Yes, we do. Yeah, so feedback for us as well as the vendors, um, like a month after the wedding, we let things kind of die down, and then check in with them um, and, and ask for that. Um, and as I said, we launched last year, and there's an incredibly long lead time uh, in this industry, you know, since people spend about a year planning. Um, but yeah, very excited to offer uh, that we've gotten very positive feedback from the couples that we had go through the, the full process in 2018. Thank you so much.